As President Biden steps aside, it is crucial for the Democratic Party to rally behind a candidate who embodies strength, experience, and a vision for a better America. That candidate is Kamala Harris. With a career spanning over two decades in public service, Harris' qualifications are unparalleled. Her journey from prosecutor to Attorney General of California to U.S. Senator and now as Vice President showcases a trajectory of dedication and leadership. Is that I stand 10 toes down with Vice President Kamala Harris to become the next president of the United States. Um, I made it very clear very early. If Joe is out, there is only one person that I will be wor working for. So this idea of throwing out Joe Manchin and all these other people, listen, if y'all decide to go any other way, have fun with that. But the only person that I will get out there and break my back for and campaign for and believe in who is capable and qualified qualified is Vice President Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris' tenure as a prosecutor and Attorney General of California highlights her commitment to justice and reform. She took on big banks, fought for marriage equality, and implemented innovative programs to reduce recidivism. Her record as a senator is equally impressive where she championed issues such as healthcare reform, climate change, and criminal justice reform. As a vice president, Harris has been instrumental in tackling the COVID-19 pandemic, working on immigration, and addressing racial injustice. Her experience is not just limited to policy and legislation. Harris has a unique ability to connect with people to understand their struggles and to inspire them. Her personal story as a daughter of immigrants and her historic election as the first female, first black and first South Asian vice president resonates with many Americans who see themselves in her. For democratic voters, particularly black women who have been the backbone of the democratic party, Harris represents hope and progress. She understands the challenges faced by marginalized communities and has consistently worked to address them. But it is not enough for black women to stand alone. It is time for white women and for all Democrats to recognize and unite behind a candidate who can defeat Trump. The 2016 election serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of a divided party. Bernie Sanders supporters, many of whom chose not to support Hillary Clinton, inadvertently paved the way for the Trump presidency. Look, America cannot afford to repeat that mistake. The Democratic Party must stop internal conflicts and focus on the bigger picture defeated a convicted criminal who threatens the very fabric of democracy. Presidential race. Joe Biden just dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. And so you may be wondering, what now? Well, I heard we're going to elect the first black woman to be the president of the United States. I heard the prosecutor is going to beat the convicted felon. I heard that as a 22-year-old in America, I am excited to vote for Kamala Harris because we have three and a half months to kick Trump's ass. Look, I had the opportunity to meet Joe Biden. I'm incredibly grateful that he's a very kind man, led with empathy, was one of the most productive presidents we've seen in American history. Gave us the largest infrastructure bill we've seen since Eisenhower, a massive expansion of veterans health care, almost a trillion dollars for climate change. And he decided it was best for this country to unite Democrats to step aside. You know who didn't do that was Donald Trump, the convicted felon, Donald Trump, who's running to stay out of federal prison, Donald Trump, who sexually abuses women and brags about it. So I think Gen Z is ready to elect Kamala Harris. You can let me know what you think. Let's go, baby! No. Kamala Harris has shown resilience, intelligence, and the ability to lead in challenging times. Our candidacy is not just about breaking barriers. It is about steering the U.S. towards a future where justice, equality, and opportunity are within reach for all. It is about ensuring that 
the progress that so hardly has been fought for continues and that the rights of all Americans are protected. Judge, have you ever discussed Special Counsel Mueller or his investigation with anyone? Well, it's uh, in the news every day. I... Have you discussed it with anyone? Uh, with other judges, I know. Uh, Have you discussed Mueller or his investigation with anyone at Kasowitz, Benson, and Torres, the law firm founded by Mark Kasowitz, President Trump's personal lawyer? Uh, Be sure about your answer, sir. Um, well, I'm not remembering, but if you have something you want to... Are you certain you've not had a conversation with I... anyone at that law firm? Kasowitz, Benson... Kasowitz, Benson, and yeah. Torres, which is the law firm founded by Mark Kasowitz, yeah. who is President Trump's personal lawyer. Are you, have you had any conversation about Robert Mueller or his investigation with anyone at that firm? Yes or no? Well, is there a person you're talking about? I'm asking you a very direct question. Yes or no? Who'd you talk to? I don't think I, I, I'm not remembering, but I'm, I'm happy to be refreshed or if you want to tell me who you're thinking. So are, you, works. I, are you saying that with all that you remember, you have an impeccable memory. You've been speaking for almost eight hours, I think more with this committee about all sorts of things you remember. Yeah. How can you not remember whether or not you had a conversation about Robert Mueller or his investigation with anyone at that law firm. This I don't, investigation has only been going on for so long, sir. So right, I'm not sure I, do I, I, I'm just trying to think, do I know anyone who works at that firm? I might know. Have you had, that's not my question. My question is, have you had a conversation with anyone at that firm about that investigation? It's a really specific question. I would like to know the person you're thinking of, because what if there's- I think a, you're thinking- As you look towards this next election, let us not, sway by, by divisions or doubt. Look, remember that unity is the strength of the Democratic Party. And even though there's this big tent and different fractions come together, they have the leadership in Kamala Harris. She embodies the very best of what America can be. It is never too late to dream of a better future. And with Kamala Harris at the home, that future is within grasp. So I say this to all Democrats, to all women, to all Americans who believe in justice and equality. It is time to unite, to fight, and to ensure that Kamala Harris becomes the next president of the United States. The stakes are too high to do anything less. I am so sure that none of you want to live in a country that is outlined in the Heritage Foundation Project 2025. Nothing of what I've just said for the last five minutes should even matter. Juxtapose Kamala Harris against the nominee, the candidate of the other party a convicted criminal. Like, folks, come on. Look at the broader picture. A person, a party that doesn't believe that a woman should have the right to her own body and reproductive system. A party that wants a coronation. I thought you folks didn't want kings. A party that has become a cult. They talk about, oh, cult of personality. They are the cult of personality. A person who has said horrible things. A person who has treated women as if they were just plastic bags. Folks, come on. Democratic Party, come on. Do not make the same mistake you did with Hillary Clinton. These divisions got to stop. 
Pull up your big boy, your big girl pants. Look at a broader picture unless you want to live in a country that resembles The Handmaid's Tale. Why is it that over and over and over again, black women get it, but for some reason, the rest of you kind of don't? Like, why would you take a, a weapon and injure yourself? Like, it makes no sense to me, none at all. You know, so many of Bernie Sanders supporters decided not to support Hillary Clinton. And that was just horrible, horrible. I have faith, okay? I have faith. So I, 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 I'm hoping you'll do the right thing. I really hope you'll do the right thing and stop this, this, this division that exists. Look, I understand in a big tent where it is very inclusive and everyone you know, have their own little priorities and all that, all that kind of stuff. But you've got to look at the broader picture. Look at the broader picture. Either you want to live in a country that's that, 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 that is democratic for the most part, or you want to live in a version of The Handmaid's Tale. It's your choice, right? Now, why am I concerned? Listen. You cough, we get a call, okay? <laughs> so do the right thing. I'm sure you will. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Welcome. Make you wanna move Well, 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 bienvenue, bienvenido, welcome, welcome, and welcome. Look, here at Majesty Sussex Report, we spare no expenses, right? We don't have the budget, but we find the budget to have holographic Queen Bee to just do a couple of moves to show our excitement for just being alive, right? <laughs> no expenses spared. I sold all my shoes. <laughs> just for that, just for that 30 seconds or less. Oh boy. Well, welcome everyone, welcome. Well, how are you all feeling? How are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, after that news broke on Sunday, um, for many of you, I'm sure you can remember when you heard it or where you were. And I, at the beginning, I think I, I had mixed feelings about, about, about it. And I think mainly because of one particular thing that I didn't like too much. I don't like when people, it seems anyways, that they're being, being, being bullied to make a decision or, or, um, an enormous amount of pressure is being placed on them and it's being done in public. I didn't appreciate that, how the media handled uh, that, that, that first debate. You, you have a convicted criminal. You have someone who they know very well is willing to take America in, in, into a direction that I pray to baby Jesus, America does not head into because once you get into that kind of regime i think it's extremely difficult to get out of it especially being a superpower and knowing that the other candidate is 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 basically looking for a coronation 
right? And Project 2025 lays it all out. It's like, there it is. And I didn't appreciate how so many people started coming out and saying things in public about Joe Biden. Joe Biden has been a wonderful, um, you know, running partner and, and, and partner to President Obama. There was a nice balance there. And, you know, he came out of his retirement because still with all the things that, you know, that man had done to the U.S., all the people who died from COVID, all the misinformation and all the, 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 the sort of rise in racism and homophobia and discrimination and all that stuff and, and misogyny. People were still like, yeah, I guess I'll vote for him again. I, it, it was just mind boggling to me. Right. And the only, you know, it seemed like the only person who could beat him was Joe Biden. And, and because Joe Biden held in many ways sort of the moral compass of the country. Um, and he, he, he gave out a retirement and did what he needed to do. Right. He went into that Oval Office and, and started to make decisions alongside with Kamala um, Harris. And, you know, has what I, I think has stabilized America and has created, you know, again, for, for that economy to, 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 to start going again. And it's going to have ups and downs as all economies do. And, you know, some people are going to feel it more than others. But I would say he did a great job in rescuing um, America. I, in the last months of, you know, last year and months in this year, you know, the, the one thing that hover over Joe Biden for me was his decision making in regards to the Middle East and regards to Gaza. Because Joe Biden for me is the president of empathy. He's the president that understands pain. He's a president that understands other people suffering because he's gone through so much and he's experienced so much. And I, 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 I found it very hard to reconcile that Joe Biden with a Joe Biden that was, you know, every red line that, that they placed you know, Israel just crossed it and said, okay, so what are you going to do? And they just send them more weapons and more bombs. And that was highly disappointing. But having said that, I, I can hold many thoughts in my head and I, I, I can look at a situation and think, okay, what's the decision that needs to happen now in order to make sure that this, whatever democracy that is that 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 is left we can still try and rebuild rather than handing it over to an autocrat or or to a a, a, a person who's going to become a totalitarian regime and heading towards fascism and all of that right okay so i decided to cut this and move on because i actually do go on speaking for another 30 minutes on this i'm thinking that i'll just but all that other stuff that I talked about, maybe I'll call it um, bonus track or something, and have it as a separate um, a separate uh, not episode, but you know, an appendix to the episode. And if you folks really feel like you want to hear what I have to say, you can on a rainy day click on it and watch it. Okay, let's move on. Less than 12 hours, Kamala Harris and Democrats raised $50 million through Act Blue. All small dollar donations, less than $200, $5, $10, $25 donations. When it's all said and done, after 24 hours, it will go down as the largest fundraising day in American political history. People are fired up. People are excited. Democrats are excited. I'm excited. 
to vote for Kamala Harris. You know, I made a video a few weeks ago. The New York Post called Kamala Harris a DEI hire, a DEI hire. Well, that successful black woman just raised more money for Democrats than anyone in history. That successful black woman in November is going to be the president of the United States and is going to take Donald Trump and crush him like a bug. We're sick of it. We're sick and tired of the MAGA movement and Donald Trump. I'm sick of it. And Kamala Harris was a key part of the Biden administration, a key part to all the successes, the first gun reform in the last three decades, the largest infrastructure bill since Eisenhower, the largest expansion of veterans health care in decades, the largest climate investment ever. And that's why we're going to elect Kamala Harris. Let's go. I am just absolutely loving this dude. Like, I really am. Like, his enthusiasm, like, his everything. I'm just like, all right. So people like you exist. This is awesome. <laughs> this is so great. Um, here's hope. Here's hope. And now we talk about the royals. Okay. So happy birthday or happy belated birthday because I think it's already passed, maybe. Anyways, happy birthday to Prince George. Happy 11th birthday. Hope you had a wonderful time. Um, the picture you see was taken by George's mom, um, the Princess of Wales, who, as we all know, is a aficionado of photography. And um, this is a wonderful picture of the young man. That's fantastic. Now on other news when you think that certain people can't go lower and i've said this before like they keep sinking lower and lower oh 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 there's one thing i wanted to say before i forget do you remember do you remember when we kiss a while back i said if any of these people who are in the Royal Rota or any of that, if they had one iota of intelligent brain cells, they would just jump ship and do what Omar Scobie is doing. Because just the whole idea of supply and demand, right? How many of them are there trying to feed out of the same bowl, criticizing Meghan and Harry. A whole bunch of them. Even the ones that are kind of like, they take them out of their crib and let them say a couple of words that are offensive and rude and racist, misogynistic and all of that. And then they, you know, they put them back. Even, even them, like, so it, it's, it's, a, it's become a small bowl because we have a reduced royalty and especially reduced working royals, supposedly, right? So it's a reduced bull, bull. So if you had any kind of intelligence or even common sense, you would jump ship and do what Omid is doing. Omid now presents a more, let's call it sort of balance, right? A balanced sort of way. I mean, we may not agree with everything he says, but it's 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 mostly fair and balanced and let's face it we we're kind of biased also right we don't want we, we don't want to think that <laughs> i'm not going to say it but he had there, there, there's an entire you know community that we only have one of him so if there were and, and look the dude is completely just killing it, killing it. The whole thing about the bidding war for his um, series, man, good for him. I'm so happy for him. Living, living, good life, and reaping the rewards of being a true journalist, an honest person that is reporting to the best of his capabilities of the, as to what he knows. And as Baron has said, and on Royal Sussex, ooh, Baron, 
Baron thinks that he's going to bring it. He's going to bring it and he's going to, because obviously you, you, you write in fiction, right? So you, you just say, well, it's fiction, but we know it's based on reality. So it would be interesting. I, I, I mean, I'm joining the, the club. Can't, can't wait for the series to, to be out. And um, I, I wish him continued, continued success. Good for him. Good for him. But what I first I want to um, move on to is this, this, this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These people, it really gives you a sense, not like we didn't know already, of the type of human being, if we can call them that, that they are. So this gem of a human being wrote on Twitter after Biden's announcement was um, made public, made public, because um, a bad day for a uh, Joe Biden, but this one in 1972 must have been. I can't. I can't. I can't even. What is wrong with these people? I, I, what is wrong with them? I, 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 I can't, oh. So he then, I guess, either realized or someone might, might have told him, hey, you monster, that doesn't seem like a, a good thing to keep up there. So he replaced that tweet with this one, right? Crooked Joe Biden basically retweeting Donald Trump. I, I, I don't have words. I really don't. And he also tweeted, I'm not showing the, I just captured the um, image there with, um, Kamala Harris. So someone had uploaded um, part of, you know, a commercial basically that was done in 2020. Uh, I think it was 2020. Um, is it 2020 2019? Oh, it's right there. Yeah. Um, so it was, it's, 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 it's an old commercial. So he just, you know, without much knowledge of anything, it's like, wow, they were quick with this. Kamala 2024. They didn't, this, this, this is old. It, someone just, just, just uploaded from, from what they had before. So the advert was created in the lead up to the 2020 presidential election when Kamala Harris was running in the Democratic primary. That's where the video is from. You know, for a person who has, you know, he, he, he went, 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 went to the court case and the person who was uh, harassing him, I, I, uh, let's just move on. I don't even want to talk about him anymore. That disgusting people, disgusting. So this is your trigger warning, all of you, for people who get triggered by these things. And I know some of you don't want to see it, listen to it or anything like that because and I want to respect that. So the next one, you're actually going to hear him speak. It's Mr. Bowel Movement or something like that, I think his name is, um, which in, in, it, it's just a, a, a really poor excuse for occupying space on this planet. But his whole thing that he's going around trying to um, sell is that... Um, Megan is um, plotting right now because she has a secret biography that she is going to launch at some point because the Sussexes are desperate for money, as always. And that he, he this, this is the way he, he kind of said it. He goes, you know, it's sort of ironic that the, the, the king is sick 
and, and, and the Princess of Wales is sick. And, and you know, the royal family here is not having a good time, but they're healthy, right? Like the Sussex is they're healthy. These people, and listen, I know you folks say, don't look at them, don't shoot them, but it's part of what I do, right? I, I, I bring them, I, I, because look, I don't want to fool myself in thinking I'm in some la la land because it's not la la land. There's the beauty and there's the, <laughs> and there's the beast. <laughs> and sometimes you've got to look the beast right in the face and go, you're ugly. You're ugly, you're stupid, you're worse than manure. You're ugly, you're stupid, and you're manure. Yes, you are. Okay. You're, you're, you're stupid. You're ugly. You're, 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 you're like a manure. <laughs> you occupy space you shouldn't. And when last have you taken a shower? Damn. Anyways, here he is. I don't remember Megan saying anything for months and months and months, possibly last year maybe i mean I, I, she's been incredibly quiet can we give them some kind of credit here have they reined in their attacks because they understand that the, the king and princess of wales are seriously unwell no i don't think so at all i think that uh she's allowed harry to make the running i mean she is reserving herself for her autobiography it's much better for her to be seen as the silent uh princess or duchess the... no i don't i don't think so at all you see because I, I, I went when I was when I was a young lad, you know. I was a young lad, and there was this foreigner, this foreigner, this this, this exotic, mulatto-looking, you know. It, it was just exquisite. It, it, it was one of those, those like gods, you know. And 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 they paid no attention to me whatsoever, none at all. I don't know why. I mean, that day I, 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 I brushed my teeth, so I, I, don't, I don't know, you know. So it's, she is, she is, she's awful. She, 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 she's just disgusting. Ah, <laughs> oh, gosh, I need to, I need to check what's in my tea, honestly, because what is <laughs> this man this man just need love <laughs> someone please go love him <laughs> give me <laughs> uh, this man needs some love oh my loving <laughs> ah he is so he's so special isn't he so special god bless you God bless you. But listen, he called Megan princess, right? She's like, P -p 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 princess, uh, uh, the duchess. <laughs> because they know, they know she's a princess. They know it. <laughs> they know it, baby. And spotted out in the Montecito restaurant, an Italian restaurant, our beautiful princess, the Duchess of Sussex, and Kimberly William Priestley, um, who played, I think, the um, bride in Father of the Bride. And that white t shirt, that white blouse, so typical of Carolina Herrera, one of um, Megan's favorite designer. Um, Carolina Herrera is from Venezuela, mi país. And, um, She's very chic and elegant, and she always says that you know having a a, a white t-shirt or, or or blouse it can go with anything. So just absolutely chic.
conflict of interest, clear conflict of interest. What's my conflict? What's my conflict of interest? I think the American public has seen quite well that you are biased in this situation and you've not been objective, and that would arguably be the conflict. Well, of you know, I haven't been the only decision maker here. Now, let's take the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who was approved by the Senate, ninety-four to six, with specific discussion on the floor that he would be responsible for supervising the Russian investigation. I'm glad you brought up that. That's a great he has topic. Thirty years' experience, and we had a number of senior prosecutors in the department involved in this process, both career and non-career. Yes, I've, 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 I've read the process, sir. I have another question. And I'm glad you brought that subject up because I have a question about that. Earlier today, in response to Senator Graham, you said, quote, that you consulted with Rosenstein constantly, unquote, with respect to the special counsel's investigation and report. But Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein is also a key witness in the firing of FBI Director Comey. Did you consult well, that's with, D I'm not finished. Yeah. Did you consult with DOJ ethics officials before you enlisted Rod Rosenstein to participate in a charging de 